What's up, bikers? I'm Johnny Thompson from Fit for Racing. And I'm Johnny Thompson, the CrossFitter. Today, we're going to tell you why you should and shouldn't do CrossFit. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. Listen. I basically started CrossFit to get better on the bike. And I did exactly that for many years. I did strength training and cardio separately. But when I did CrossFit, combining all of the elements together, I did increase my on-bike performance. Eventually, I became quite competitive and I opened two CrossFit gyms. One of those, eight and a half years ago. So I have been a CrossFit coach for a long time. So I've got a very good insight into the pros and cons. And that's exactly what we're gonna to explore today. The pros and cons of CrossFitting if you're a mountain biker. Point number one is, what's the CrossFit gym like that you're considering going to or are already going to? Because ultimately, CrossFit is only as good as the programming and the coach that you are following. Often, the coach or the gym owner, they are very much into CrossFit because of CrossFit competition. Now that's very different from CrossFit for general population. CrossFit competition is inherently dangerous because it is a sport. If you're racing to get to competitions and do well, you have to do Olympic weightlifting at very heavy weights. You have to do gymnastic at high volume. And you have to do cardio. Well, some would argue not that much, but it then becomes a specialism, the sport of fitness. Ultimately, you could go to a gym where everyone in there is desperately trying to increase their fitness to compete at CrossFit, which creates a very dangerous environment for somebody that wants to stay fit and healthy and work on areas that will make them a better rider. And that creates two things that you maybe want to avoid. That is danger. Obviously, you want to avoid danger in the gym and potentially hurting yourself with these movements and the volume of it. But also, time spent on things that you don't really need as a rider. So that time spent learning technique on snatches, say, which arguably 90% of people shouldn't even do because of mobility issues anyway, that time spent could be well better spent generating power, speed, strength on different movements that are way safer and easier to train with less technique. Technique is really important on everything, but should you need to learn at length the technique to do some of the high level gymnastic and weightlifting movements involved in CrossFit competition? Arguably, no. Number two, training with other people. So if motivation is a difficult thing to find to get to the gym and you need some help with that, then finding a community in CrossFit is absolutely great. Our communities are really strong in the gym. They communicate with each other independently. They have groups and training partners that they go to the gym with and hold each other accountable, which means it's a lot more difficult to skip a session if you've got a group of people that you'll be letting down. And having people around you of a similar ability, that's a really good motivator to be able to keep moving forwards on your performance markers. But at the same time, within the community, you can have peer groups and peer pressure that might encourage you to go too heavy, too fast, and do things that you probably shouldn't do. So on the plus side is also a negative side, but that absolutely depends on the people that are within your group and your community. Point number three is a massive plus point for CrossFit is the access to coaches that know what they're talking about. But that's also a massive negative for people that claim to be good coaches and aren't. So really check out the coach first, but access to a strength and conditioning coach of that caliber that has an understanding of what you need as an athlete is more easy to find at CrossFit gym than many other places. Albeit there are some cowboys out there and it's sometimes very dangerous to go with those trainers. You know, you need to weigh it up and do your investigation into the coach themselves, the gym itself, but the access to the trainers that might really be able to help you on a performance level is there at generally a lot of CrossFit gyms. 
chasing performance over aesthetics. So if you go to a CrossFit gym, generally, the coach's desire is to make you perform better. Whether that's for mountain biking or not, that's aside from this point. It is that very few gyms prioritize performance over aesthetics, basically what you look like. So if you go to many other gyms and you go in there and you ask people what they're there for, generally it's to look better, lose weight, but not to perform better. So as a mountain bike rider, you should really be seeking places where you can increase your performance markers on strength movements, workouts, cardiovascular tests. So you need to nail down what that performance means, but generally increasing your physical ability is the priority at a CrossFit gym. So negatives of CrossFit gyms. Number one, safety. This is a massive, massive thing. And you just simply can't say that CrossFit is safe when there are trainers and gyms out there that prioritize CrossFit competition for complete beginners. And they throw them in at the deep end and they chase numbers on heavy lifts. And it is absolutely dangerous. I've been in the CrossFit industry for over eight years, nearly 10 years, nearly 10 years. And I do see very inappropriate expressions of CrossFit in the sense that weight is prioritized over safety. Now, it's maybe not as bad as you might first think, but as an athlete that looks towards improving their performance, being in bad positions is reinforcing bad movement patterns that ultimately aren't doing the job of that movement. So say a deadlift, you're not getting the gains in your glutes and hamstrings that you could do with good technique. So it's a double whammy between safety and technique for performance. If you're going into a CrossFit gym, safety must be a priority. And that comes from proper movement first and then loading appropriately, depending on the type of workout or strengthening that you're doing. <laughs> Negative number two is that it's not necessarily sport specific. So what you're looking for, I guess, is to become a better mountain biker. And to do that, yes, you need the foundations of all 10 general physical skills, whatever CrossFit harp on about. With that foundation then becomes sports-specific training, which you're not going to get from a general CrossFit class. If you keep going to classes without doing any of your own programming, then you will stay at a level that is general. And if you want to take your fitness to the next level and ride better, then there are better methodologies out there that will prioritize the time of year, the type of movement, what your sport needs, whether it's enduro, cross country, downhill, all of those things in time domains and the type of stresses that will improve your riding. If you're completely out of shape and you want a foundation, then CrossFit is great. But beyond that, start looking into things that are more specific for riding. So another big negative is our point number three, competition. We've talked about it a lot. If you're a racer on the bike, then there's a fair chance that you want to race people in the gym. Racing people in the gym inherently is dangerous unless you do it under control and the movement selection is sound for your ability and very safe. If that's the case, then I absolutely agree that it's a massive positive. But you go to a competition of Do The Open, which is an online annual event that CrossFit put on, and they're encouraging everybody to do it. You don't want to do the scaled version because then that will, will reflect badly in your peer group. So then you go RX and then you have to perform 55 deadlifts at what might be your three rep max, and then move on to wall balls and rowing and handstand press-ups. And all of these things are going to put you in a danger, dangerous position because you're fighting to get the reps in the time to get the best time possible or the most reps possible to beat your friends. And whilst doing that, safety is out the window. You know, you don't race downhill to be safe. You try and eliminate any times that you might crash. Your skill level might be better. You moderate your speed on particular areas, but ultimately it's a dangerous sport. So inherently, you're gonna compromise your safety a little bit to win. So 
in CrossFit workouts, that's exactly what happens with competitive people, particularly mountain bikers. And that for now is a little list of pros and cons for CrossFit versus mountain biking. Hopefully with it, you have a better understanding of where I stand as a CrossFit or previously a CrossFit coach and a mountain bike specific coach. I leave CrossFit in the gym, the gyms that I own, and I take the mountain bike specific strength and conditioning into fit for racing. So in there is only things that are gonna make you a better mountain biker and not gonna compromise your safety simply to race or be better at CrossFit the sport. That's it for this episode. If you liked it, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Peace.